Our next presenter is uh, Dr. Jose Buenbiendo Mani Buena uh, from De La Salle University in the Philippines. Uh, he's an expert in an area of sustainable mobility, environmental modeling, energy modeling, uh, EVs, and smart mobility. Uh, he's also an executive director of EVAP. Uh, floor is yours, uh, Doc Manny. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone. I don't know where you are. Where are you from? But it should cover everyone. Yeah. So uh, I was also listening to the previous talk and to the previous presentations. And uh, um, I'm sure after hearing all those advanced uh, technologies, advanced processes, you'll be very disappointed with what I'm going to present. I'm going to present something okay, really low tech. I'm going to present something. What is what I'm going to present? What are the realities on, on the ground in a developing country? The uh, technical capacities, the financial cap capabilities in developing countries are very much different from 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 developed countries. So uh, that also somehow dictates the technologies that are being adopted in in these countries. Or specifically, I'll be talking about the, the case of the of the Philippines. So I'll be starting by uh, giving an overview of EVs in the Philippines. And uh, I'll be focusing my talk on the charging uh, challenges of EGPs and e trikes I'm sure uh, for you, for, for all of you here, also from developing countries, you might have something equivalent in, in, in your areas. Uh, I'll be talk, touching a little bit about charging economics, who charge in what way. As indicated, the program I'm supposed to compare vehicle charging, onboard charging versus uh, versus uh, battery swapping, and then I'm gonna be talking more about the charging mode trajectory. Okay, will battery swapping, for example, stay, or eventually the industry expected to shift towards more fast charging, and then some key points. Yeah, uh, so in this slide shows the, uh, the vehicle mix, electric vehicle mix in the different Southeast Asian countries. And uh, unlike Thailand, for example, which has now have a, now, which now has a big uh, um, electric car population, Philippines is still mostly, the, the electric vehicle mix in the Philippines is mostly consist of, uh, consist of electric tricycles electric two-wheelers and also uh, uh, some utility vehicles. And those are mostly the electric chimneys. And Singapore, of course, okay, if uh, Tesla, Tesla is thinking of putting up a service center in Singapore, this only means that uh, Singapore is focusing more on high-end high -end vehicles and that dictates also what charging network do they have. So by looking at the vehicle mix, the type of electric vehicles that tells you also what charging network would the different countries would be needed. Yeah, uh, some more about the electric chimneys in the Philippines. So I have been here a, a, a six, a seven, seven electric chimney models. It, it provides you the Passenger capacities, the battery types, so all of them use uh, lithium phosphate batteries, the nominal voltages, the battery capacities, the charging types, and the energy top up mode. As you will see there, okay, down, down below you have two models that utilizes battery swapping. And if you're going to look at the battery capacities, they're not really that big compared to the normal electric cars. So the range of this vehicle normally is only limited to 30 to 60 kilometers. Okay, the biggest would be the one of Gets, okay, which uh, goes up to about 100 uh, kilometers. So it's not that long really. So that's why the charging component really plays a very big role in, in the use of in the use of this uh, of these vehicles. So um, these are mostly limited range as mentioned. 
Um, these are captured. They, they these are captured charging at the depot during off peak hours if they do uh, vehicle charging. So there's there are no public charging points. So they okay, each of these uh, operators would have their own uh, charging system in the depot and then they charge their during off peak hours. And for the battery swapping uh, units. Swappings are done at the battery station operated by the transport cooperative and or the vehicle supplier themselves. And um, normally these batteries have a 0.5C ratings with once a pick, but no cooling system. So that's why uh, this, the, the operators are very afraid of uh, charging them at their picks. So normally they would charge them at 0.5C. In fact, that's already quite high. Normally, they would charge it around 0.325 C. Because in, in previous, uh, previous experiences indicated that uh, uh, charging them at higher rates hits up the battery because, as I've said, there are no cooling systems. And uh, it led to premature, uh, premature damages. I have now in here a listings of the different tricycles used in the Philippines. So these are the three meters. These are the equivalents of tuk-tuks in, 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 in Thailand. And these are the equivalents of the auto rickshaws in, uh, in, in India. So the most of these vehicles are charged via battery swapping, except for a couple of the, couple of the units. Similarly, also, if you would see the battery capacities, they are quite small. Okay, normally, the range are limited to 30 to 50 kilometers. So similarly, also the same as with, uh, as with chimneys, the charging system plays a very important role in their operation. In the profile, actually, it's very similar to that of chimneys. Very limited range. Yeah, but this time, uh, these this units are charged at home during off-peak hours. So the driver goes home, then the battery goes down, charge it there, and then goes back again to the terminal and pick passengers. So these vehicles are normally operated informally. There are no B-set schedules. So the vehicles get operated whenever the operator feels like driving them around. So yeah, so they go home, charge at home, and then go back go back to the, to the terminal. If for the sw swapping uh, battery uh, vehicles, similarly also swapping are done at the battery station operated with transport cooperative and or the vehicle supplier. And this vehicle normally use similar battery system as battery cells as with those of, uh, as with those of electric chips because normally uh, these are produced also by the same, by the same manufacturers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just some view on uh, what are what the numbers looks like. Okay, in in, in in the Philippines, I got this from our current um, key design work. So we're looking at okay, are we going for lithium phosphate batteries, which are slow charging, or we go for lithium polymer titrated oxide. Okay a bit of fast charging, and then we go to the ultra fast charging of you know, like the LTO batteries. So you would see there the standard charge rates, 0.3C, 1C, 2C, maximum charge rates. So for LTO, you can really charge them fast. They have also a significantly larger cycle life, at least on paper. Because um, so far what we have really actually tested uh, long term are the LFPs. Uh, we're just looking at the possibility of going LPTO or or LTO. So these are the cell or pack capacities, okay, the cell pack cost. And um, okay, based on the indicated capacities there, um, okay, that, that leads us to the battery cost per kilowatt hour. So as you will see, the lithium phosphate battery still costs the least, 2.18 uh, pesos per kilowatt hour. For lithium polymer titrated oxide is 2.78, okay, and lithium titrated oxide is 2.74. Uh, 
Okay, that is in terms of the battery cost okay, per kilowatt hour. By the way, the assumption here is only half the, 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 the batteries would have half the life of, 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 of the specified cycle life. Um, okay, just to be more on the conservative side. <clears throat> okay, but if you look at the service cost, so that's the one, that's the graph that's on the lower left, you have the energy top up add on cost for EGPs, that is per kilowatt R. Okay, those are pesos per kilowatt R. If you look at the swapping batteries, battery swapping versus fast charging, battery swapping uh, translates to a higher to a higher servicing cost. Okay, why? Because you would need at least two persons to, to load the to load the batteries, then bring them out and then Okay, operate the, the operate the charging facility. While for fast chargers, okay, this could be self-operated. So the service cost for swapping batteries is 13.36 pesos per kilowatt hour. In fact, it's even bigger than the cost of the electricity. Um, for the lithium um uh, for, for, for the fast charging, it's only 4.13 pesos per kilowatt hour. So if you add on everything, the, the uh, battery swapping mode leads to higher higher uh, cost, charging cost, higher battery and battery and charging cost. So the question now is, uh, okay, why do still some of the vehicles use battery swapping? Okay, number one, Higher cost of fast charging batteries. I, I think we can easily see there. Uh, and uh, okay, that is a very difficult problem to solve, especially if your vehicle suppliers have financial limitations. And especially so if you couple that with operators having very limited financial capacity as well. So the, the manufacturers of these vehicles, so these are locally made, are mostly small and medium scale industries. So if, okay, they were, if they're also going to do some part of the financing, I'm gonna discuss more about that later on because your, your market don't, don't, have, don't also have the financial capacities to invest on the vehicles directly uh, on, on their own. Okay, then okay, utilizing a very, Expensive okay, uh, uh, unit okay, would be would be a problem. So yeah, so why still use battery swapping? Higher cost of fast charging coupled with key okay, vehicle supplier financial limitations, key okay, very limited operator financial capacity, and okay, some of the um, some of the um, vehicle manufacturers. Also thought, okay, why, why don't we put in their expensive batteries? We can look for some investors. And then okay, we'll just lease it out so that they don't have to cover the initial cost. Okay. But right now, there's a lack of battery monitoring and tracking system. Okay. Although that, that is now being integrated in most of, in most of, the, of the vehicles okay, that are rolled out, rolled out locally. There's also a lack of a fast charging network. One of the main disadvantages of doing battery swapping is uh, it limits the operation of vehicles in the vicinity of the battery swapping stations. So if you're talking, uh, talking with operators, you would prefer the diesel run units because uh, they can use it somewhere else. Well, before the electric vehicles, they can just use it in the vicinity of the battery swapping stations. But if you've got fast charging network, okay, then that solves the problem. So I guess if the, if the uh, fast charging network is developed, okay, on their own, the operators will prefer, will prefer fast charging batteries, even though they cost more, okay, and will be adopting uh, fast charging instead of a battery swapping. And we have also brought the problem of technology inertia. In the initial stages of electric vehicle adoption in the Philippines, the uh, transport industry had a lot of bad experiences. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, they tried charging because everything before was hit and miss. They charge charging the batteries using fast chargers, and then it it, it prematurely uh, um, degraded the batteries. And uh, everyone thought now that okay, even though you educate them, they will always say okay, we, we don't want fast charging. We want slow charging. Slow charging is better. Yeah. Now, so okay, with that, okay, then who swaps and who charges? Oh, it really depends on the business model. And um, okay, let us see. Okay, business form model number one. Normally, okay, this is used by fleet operators that have very limited financial capacity. So normally, these are the transport cooperatives. So in this case, you have layer one okay, providing the vehicles. And then you have battery leasing. Because normally it's battery swapping. So normally okay, the vehicles are sold with one battery set and then they lease out the second battery. So the second battery is normally invested on by the manufacturer themselves. Okay, or in some cases, some operators would have the capacity also to buy a second, a second battery, a reserve, a, a spare battery that okay, they invest on that. Or in some cases, they, they do a joint venture. Then you have the vehicle financing and, and leasing. Vehicle financing and leasing normally is uh, supplied by the, a government bank. So in the Philippines, we have land bank and DBP right now. Philippines is doing... This is the process of modernizing its uh, public transport system. So, um, so P2 is the government bank. And however, okay, the government bank requires equity. Unfortunately, the fleet operators don't have enough financial capacity to build up the equity. So normally, the manufacturing, or the manufacturer, the suppliers of the vehicle also handles that equity, which is eventually also being paid back by the fleet operator. So the financing or the leasing uh, component, it's uh, being shared by a third party, normally a bank and the manufacturer. And then for the battery swapping or vehicle charging services, it's either operated by the, by the manufacturer or the supplier of the vehicle or the operator themselves, or in most cases, they actually do a joint venture. Now let's go to the second business model. Okay, in the business, in the second business model, okay, this also mostly involves cooperatives, but these are cooperatives that have more financial capacity than the first group. Okay, under this one, normally the manufacturing of the vehicles and the battery leasing, spare batteries are invested on by the manufacturer of the vehicle. And then the manufacturer of vehicle shares okay, with the uh, shares the, uh, the task of providing the financing and leasing with a third party, normally the government bank, and it's the fleet operators that invest on the battery swapping and vehicle charging services. For business model number three, also this focuses on cooperatives, okay, but this time these are now cooperatives that are more cash than, the, than those adopting business model number two. So in this case, you have the manufacturers just focus, the suppliers just focusing on producing and supplying the vehicles and party financing the adoption of the vehicles. It's the fleet operators that invest on the spare battery, but the battery swapping and vehicle charging services and fleet operations. Now there is also a fourth setup. Okay, in this case. Okay, the battery manufacturer, the vehicle manufacturing, battery leasing, financing, and battery swapping are being handled by the vehicle supplier. So okay, this applies to vehicle suppliers that have very good financial capability. So it's, he's able to cover everything. So what will the fleet operators do? They'll just have to list the vehicles and operate them and pay them a monthly fee. Or in some cases, they do avoid a joint venture, they do profit sharing. And normally, since okay, these are supplied by 
suppliers or manufacturers that have good financial capacities, they do they do they adopt fast charging batteries and they're able to do fast charging. <clears throat> and they partner with um, local charging network providers. So it provides the needed market, assured market for the charging providers. So they invest in them and then okay, this operator, the, the, the charging, the, the manufacturer just focuses on providing the vehicles, okay, leasing the batteries, uh, financing, financing the whole system. And for business, business model number five, Okay, normally this happens when the operator is a corporation. So they have the capacity to invest on, okay, on the vehicle. So you have a manufacturer that supplies the vehicle. Okay, the um, fleet operator invests on the, on the spare battery okay, or invests on a big battery that is capable of onboard charging. Okay, they, they, do, they do their own financing. Uh, they do they operate and charge their own vehicle, they operate their own charging points, and then you, they do their own, they do the fleet operations, of course. And uh, okay, recently there's also a six business model okay, wherein everything is operated by one player from the supply of the vehicles, battery leasing, okay, so on and so forth, is only being done by one player. And uh, normally okay, this player adopts fast charging. Units. Now, why is battery swapping adopted? So as we have said before, cost is a problem. And if you're going to look at a comparison of electric chip fees and Euro 4 chip fees, okay, there's a very big difference between the cost of electric chip fees and Euro 4 chip fees. A may, a may not be as big as a difference in, uh, in other vehicle segments, but it's because okay, these vehicles are are fitted with smaller batteries compared to say to, to the normal normal electric uh, vehicles. But still, okay, that is a very big barrier for the adoption of these vehicles. And adding more onto that cost, okay, would further discourage the market from adopting electric vehicles. So what will most probably happen in the future? Okay, so, we can now look at business model seven, number seven. You have the manufacturers just focusing on supplying the units. There will be a third party that will be invest that will be financing and leasing the units. So since the manufacturers will not be burdened anymore in in uh, co-investing on the financing, they can focus on coming up with keep better better vehicles, longer range batteries, they can invest on, they can adopt uh, fast charging batteries. And you have also a third layer, investing, investing on battery leasing. And you have vehicle charging services, either being operated by the battery leasing companies or third parties. And then you have fleet operators that will just be operating the the units. Okay, the, the main difference as with okay, the previous one, as with this uh, business model number four, okay, is uh, business model number five and six. Okay, sorry about that. Is these are for corporations. Okay, but with this model, the operator can focus on operating and yet they are cooperative because each of the components are handled by some by some by by by, by other by other parties. Okay, with that. Okay, adopting fast charging batteries now and adopting fast charging okay, greatly brings down the energy cost. Okay, although, of course, it increases your, your battery leasing cost. Okay, but uh, the savings, you remember earlier that the service cost for battery swapping is a lot bigger than fast charging. So that's where actually the uh, savings really comes from. So that drastically goes down, and you end up with the industry end up with end up with more financial savings than what is currently happening. Okay. And okay, what will make this happen? So these are the enablers. Number one, projected battery cost reductions. So projections indicated that 
batteries will be going down by at least 60% by 2030. So we're hoping that if that trajectory is in, indeed is eventually followed. Okay, green routes, I think this is the biggest in either. Okay, green routes is, is um, scheduled to be implemented in the Philippines. So green routes is our route specifically just for electric vehicles. So that creates now the demand. The main reason why no one is investing on battery leasing or rolling out third, where there are no third party key battery providers is uh, there's no mass demand. So you're, there's, there's no economic scale. So you end up with very expensive batteries. Uh, that's also the reason why there are no private uh, vehicle financing companies because okay, there's no demand, there's no sustained demand and everyone is in a wait and see uh, uh, stage. So introducing green outs to create the demand, okay, it will attract more manufacturers and to create the economics of scale for the battery leasing also for the manufacturers that brings down the cost and partner with the projected cost reduction, battery cost reductions. So we're hopeful that Petro will have he will have this uh, business model and the system. And of course, another enabler is to standardize the battery you or use or, or at least the charging standards for, for EGTs so that you'll have interchangeability. And of course, it follows with that also is to standardizing the batteries and uh, system voltages okay, in, 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 the, in the vehicle. So right now, if you review, if you look at the list that I provided earlier, the voltage, systems voltage of the different vehicles vary a lot. So that needs to be uh, standardized. So standardization needs to become needs to come in. Uh, but of course, still, okay, if you're looking at the fleet operations, fleet operators, you're looking at cooperatives, they lack the financial capacities. Another enabler here actually would be a guarantee fund, a government guarantee fund that would guarantee the loans of fleet operators. Introducing the green routes alone will not do the trick. In fact, it will be faced with the uh, resistance. So it's important that the government also comes in okay, to lessen the risk to, to, the, to the financing sector and um, okay, that should facilitate access to, to loans and adoption of this of these vehicles. Okay, and okay, removing the battery cost okay, from the vehicle, if you look at, for example, in the fast charging uh, uh, table, okay, that drastically bring, brings down the cost of the vehicle, in fact, even lower than the Euro 4 GT. So that is now without the vehicles. But of course, you increase the battery uh, leasing uh, cost. Okay, but that is further balanced by the especially rear by the savings on the on the up on the on the swapping services. Yeah. Sorry, Doc Mani, could you wrap up? Yeah. So to, to end my talk, um, just some key points. Fast charging is more economically preferred. Financial and technical capabilities of the vehicle supplier and operator dictates charging strategy in EGPs and bicycles. The right business model. Uh, could uh, sway top up to fast charging. And battery cost reduction, massive maturation, charging standards are the enablers. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Mani, for an overview um, of the charging opportunities for light electric vehicles and showing the system for uh, battery swapping and onboard uh, charging or fast charging. Uh, so battery swapping also create a scenario of uh, battery as a service and support minimizing the overall cost of vehicle uh, set like compared to fast charging. I have an immediate question here uh, from my colleague Alvin. Uh, 